Hi everybody, my name is Erin Lang and my presentation is on progressive retinal atrophy found in dogs. So, my research paper that I found, uh, the title is Genetic Screening for PRA Associated Mutations in Multiple Dog Breeds Shows That PRA is Heterogeneous Within In-Between Breeds. This research paper was published by Louise Downs, Rebecca Hitty, Sylvia Pregnolata, and Catherine Mellersh. Um, it was published in 2013, and I found it on the Murray State University Library website. So, first off, what is progressive retinal atrophy? So, most people call it PRA, um, so from this point on, I will be referring to it as PRA instead of progressive retinal atrophy. Uh, it's a loss of vision that happens over a couple of years. Um, it's a very gradual loss of vision. So the issue with PRA is that the rod photoreceptors are lost first and then the cone photoreceptors are lost. So these dogs do become fully blind. Um, where it really is affected, I have put the little um, eyeball diagram. Uh, the blue area, the very light blue right in front of the purple, that's the problem area where the dogs have their issues. Um, so that is what starts going bad. Uh, this can be found in over a hundred different dog breeds. Uh, so depending on what breed it is, the age that the animal starts getting these uh, symptoms of having PRA is different. The severity of PRA can be different and the signs also differ between breeds. So every breed is a little different with how they deal with PRA um, and you'll find that out through the presentation. So what breeds are affected? Australian Shepherds. See, you come here. Come here. So I am very interested in PRA because I breed and raise miniature Australian Shepherds. Sage, say hi. Uh, so I wanted to do a little bit more research into PRA. Uh, none of my dogs carry for it, but it is something that I'm a little worried about. Um, so I just kind of decided to dive a little bit deeper. Uh, that other picture on my screen is my black Labrador. Uh, his name is Moose. Um, he does not carry for PRA, but he is another breed that can be affected by PRA. So in addition to labs and Australian Shepherds, Dachshunds can be affected by it, Golden Retrievers, German Short-Haired Pointers, Corgis, and many other breeds are also affected by this PRA. So in this research, how did they find the candidates for this research? So what they did was a sample processing of blood or saliva swabs. Uh, in the picture, I have um, a dog getting processed for the saliva swabs. So essentially you just kind of put it in the pocket of their cheek, you avoid their teeth and their uh, tongue, and you just kind of swirl it around to make sure you're in there for a certain amount of time. Uh, depending on what genetic testing company you use, it does take a different amount of time, 30 seconds, 10 seconds. Um, it just kind of depends on the company. So, or you could draw blood and send the blood in for the uh, testing. So that's what they did in this research paper. Uh, they had 231 dogs that they chose to test, um, ranging over a span of 36 different breeds. Um, and they also had a doctor that was screening the eyes of the dogs as well. Um, so that is just kind of a physical looking at it and we'll get into what the doctor looks at later on in this presentation. So, how many of these dogs did have PRA that they did their research on? 56% of the dogs in the trial had it, which is about 129 of the dogs. 29 of the dogs were carriers, uh, so they did, if they were bred, they would pass on PRA, but they were not affected by PRA. 73 were wild types of PRA, and 17 different types of mutations were found in this research. So, is all PRA the same? No, it's not. There's many different kinds throughout the breeds. Um, so there are many different mutations across the breeds. Most studies only use one type of breed, so that's what makes this study a little bit different, um, is that they use 36 different types of breeds, so it gave them a better accuracy regarding PRA. Uh, so typically, closely related breeds may share the same type of PRA. So like a Labrador Retriever and a Golden Retriever could carry the same types of PRA. Um, but they did find in this present or this research that a lot of PRA mutations were shared across a bunch of different varieties of breeds. Um, so why this is important is with the designer dog breeding. So um, Labradoodles are very popular. So um, put it, mixing a poodle with a Labrador Retriever, um, 
Most people would believe that they don't have too much genetically, so if the parents carry for something, the other breed will not have that genetic problem and be prone to it. And that's not true because Labrador Retrievers and Poodles can carry the same type of mutation for PRA, so if the breeder doesn't test the parents, your puppy could wind up having a um, problem and be able to lose their vision. Um, so this is very important because it kind of shows that there are many different types of mutations and even if you don't think breeds are related to each other, it is very valuable to take the time and test your dogs genetically, whether you're breeding purebred dogs or you're not breeding purebred dogs. So you decided to have your dog tested for PRA, um, whether that's through saliva or blood, typically it is through saliva. So what do your test results mean? So the first answer you could get is clear. So that means that your dog is normal. They don't have any copies of PRA. Um, they will never pass on PRA to their puppies and everything is fine for them. So the second option is a carrier. Your dog would have one copy of the PRA allele. Um, so your dog would have a normal life. They wouldn't develop PRA, but if you chose to breed them, they could potentially pass on and their uh, children could be a carrier or if you bred them to another dog that was a carrier, they could be at risk. So, like how I said, the puppies could potentially be at risk. This means they carry two copies of the PRA alleles and the mutation of PRA will eventually develop, um, so they will ultimately become blind. So that's one of the things, if you're testing and you're breeding, that's really important uh, because you don't want to pass that on to the puppies. So this uh, picture on my presentation is the different uh, rods in the eyes. So the first row is normal eyes, what they would normally look like, um, no problems there, they look great. And then the second row is they're starting to be affected by PRA. The third row is it's getting a little bit worse. And the fourth row is they would be blind by that point in time. So that is what you're looking at when the vet is looking at the eyes. That's what they're seeing if they do happen to have PRA. And the top one is what a normal dog without PRA would look like. So you think your dog might be affected by PRA. What could be the symptoms of it? So if their eyes are kind of cloudy on the surface, they're developing cataracts, um, they have green tints like the picture that I have, uh, they just start bumping into things and they become reluctant to want to go outside, to meet new people, to spend time walking around their house, they just kind of become more withdrawn. So how is PRA actually diagnosed? So as the gradual decrease in vision happens and the dog becomes blind, you can diagnose it that way. Um, they start squinting and they're uncomfortable and dim light is another way. Uh, the third way is to have an eye exam by a veterinarian. Um, so that is what the picture that that dog is having in it. And then the fourth way is that your vet would have to look at it as well. Um, there's a decrease in retinal blood vessels. That's not something you can see, but that's something a vet can see under a microscope. So this is just a video of how a canine eye exam I'm happens. I'm Eric Ledbetter. I'm a diplomat of the American College of Veterinary Ophthalmologists. And I'm here today doing a OFA eye screening exam. Um, this is a relatively good sized clinic with a, a very diverse uh, number of breeds showing up, but these are relatively common. We're gonna do about 120 dogs today, plus or minus walk-ins. <laughs> uh, basically, it's a complete eye examination screening for any I have normality, but focusing on hereditary conditions of the eye. So we're screening them for um, genetic conditions and potentially inherited conditions of the eye. It helps people overall planning their, their breeding programs. It contributes to the health and the well-being of the breed in general. Different breeds have different problems that are especially common or important, and every breed's a little bit different. Then it's important for individual dogs to know what they're affected with and if it needs any particular treatment. So that video was just a little bit on how the eye test happens uh, through AKC, which is partnering with OFA, um, and they are certifying the eyes on the dogs that will be used in breeding stock, and most reputable breeders will have their dogs OFA tested before they decide to breed their animals. So that was just a little bit from a veterinarian, what they do, and why you want to have your dog's eyes looked at. So. 
if the veterinarian was looking at your dog um, and they looked at their eyes, uh, they kind of take you into this little like dark area. The vet has a microscope on them um, and they kind of look through the microscope on their eyes um, and they just kind of look into your dog's eyes with a bright light. And this is what they're looking for. So we've shown this before, but just so you guys can see the difference, it's, it's just amazing how different the eyes look, whether they have PRA or they don't have PRA. Um, so the eye on the left is the normal eye. That's what you want to see. There's no problems with that. And then the eye on the right is an eye that's developed PRA and is blind. So how is PRA treated? There really isn't a treatment for PRA, um, which is kind of sad, but um, just kind of making sure that you're buying from a reputable breeder, their dogs are tested, um, they have their certifications, that's a way to avoid PRA, that's the best treatment, I guess, per se. Um, the one thing to keep in mind is PRA is not painful, and the main thing that to treat this problem is to train the owners how to work with their blind pet. So you will not be able to stop your dog becoming blind, but you can help keep them comfortable, um, work with them on knowing where things are in the house, and just kind of overall making their life as comfortable as you can. Um, so with that, you want to keep the pet's environment consistent. You don't want to move tables. You don't want to move chairs or coffee tables or consoles or anything like that. You want to keep it the same so that your pet can memorize the area and know where everything is and be able to jump up on the couch still and not miss. Um, typically, dogs are able to adjust well. Um, there really isn't too many problems as long as the owner takes the time to learn how to work with their blind pet. They really won't have an issue. So if you are interested in my research paper, that is where I got it from. Uh, that was from Murray State. If you just type in the name of the presentation that I gave in the beginning, uh, you can find it and read their findings about PRA. And then this is just my work cited um, that I got my photos, my extra information on PRA, and my pictures. Thank you.